Google Earth is a free software program that allows the user to fly over a virtual globe viewing the Earth through high-resolution satellite images. The program also features many data layers as information sources including points of interest, roads, bus stops, and 3D buildings. Google Earth also enables the user to create annotated maps and to import personal spatial data. Google Earth reports the coordinates of a location indicated by the mouse cursor position and for the location of predefined places such as placemarks, respectively. The software allows the coordinates to be displayed in different coordinate systems. This presentation explains these different coordinate systems for position readout. This image displays the main window of Google Earth. The 3D viewer is the window for viewing the globe and its terrain. It contains the status bar on the bottom which displays point coordinates, elevations, and the viewpoint altitude above mean sea level. Some of the features available, such as the placemark function or the search panel, will be discussed in other presentations. When hovering the mouse over the Google Earth virtual globe in the viewer window, the current 2D position of the mouse pointer on the globe surface as well as its elevation above mean sea level are shown on the bottom of the application window. This is highlighted by the yellow rectangle. In this example, the position on the globe is expressed as latitude and longitude in decimal degrees. The elevation above sea level is expressed in feet. Google Earth provides several options for reading 2D position coordinates on the globe and the elevation of a point. These options can change between different Google Earth versions. The left part of the panel shows the readout options for the 2D position. The first three options express a point position in geographic coordinates where the user can choose between different latitude and longitude formats. The universal transverse Mercator coordinates and the military grid reference systems express the point position through an easting and northing value based on a map projection. The next few slides will explain these coordinate readout options in more detail. The right hand side of the panel allows the user to select the units of measurement. This affects how point elevations are displayed. Default units for elevations are feet, which can be changed to meters in this panel. To describe a point position on Earth, the Earth's surface is often simplified through a mathematical model. For example, the Earth's surface can be described through a spherical model, as shown to the left, or through a rotational ellipsoid model, shown to the right. In the ellipsoid model, the polar axis is shorter than the diameter of the equatorial circle. In both Earth models, a point position can be unambiguously specified through only two angular parameters called latitude and longitude. These two angles together are often referred to as geographic coordinates. To describe a point position in space that is above or below a spherical or ellipsoidal reference surface, a third parameter, height, is needed. Circles that pass through the north and south geographic pole on the spherical Earth model are called meridians. Likewise, ellipses that pass through the north and south geographic pole on the ellipsoidal Earth model are called meridians as well. Cutting the Earth with a plane that contains a meridian forms a meridian section, as shown to the left for the spherical Earth model. The prime meridian is the meridian from which other meridians are reckoned. It is like any other meridian except that it passes through the Royal Observatory, Greenwich, which is located in London, England. The latitude of a point on the sphere is the angular distance north or south of the equator measured along the meridian that runs through that point. In the figure, the red rectangle outlines the latitude angle. This angle encloses two sides which share a common endpoint, the apex, in the Earth's center. This type of latitude, where the angle apex is located in the center of the geometric reference surface, is called geocentric latitude, and denoted by the lowercase Greek letter psi. Values of latitude range from negative to positive 90 degrees. A latitude of 0 degrees indicates a point on the equator while latitudes north of the equator are positive and those to the south are negative. 
For the rotational ellipsoid, it is possible to define latitude in several additional ways. This figure shows a point P with a line passing through it, perpendicular to the ellipsoid and extending to the Earth's rotation axis. This line is called the normal. The geodetic latitude phi of a point is the angle from the equatorial plane to the normal line. Google Earth uses the concept of geodetic latitude to denote latitude in point coordinate descriptions. This means that a specific ellipsoid model of the Earth is used. A horizontal geodetic datum defines the relationship between the ellipsoid adopted as the model of the Earth's shape and the Earth itself. Using a geodetic datum, a physical point on or near the Earth's surface gets a unique set of coordinates. Google adapts the World Geodetic System 1984 Datum, or WGS84 for short. The ellipsoid associated with this datum is called the WGS84 ellipsoid. Longitude, denoted by the small Greek letter lambda, is an angle in the equatorial plane measured from the prime meridian to some other meridian of interest. The angle of longitude can be reckoned either east or west. A clockwise angle gives longitude west, and a counterclockwise angle gives longitude east. The figure shows this principle as seen from above the North Pole. For example, the angular distance of the position indicated by the yellow arrow can either be described as 135 degrees west or 225 degrees east. If the east or west designations are not explicitly given for a longitude, a positive arithmetic sign indicates longitude east and a negative arithmetic sign indicates longitude west. Therefore, the longitude of the point drawn at the yellow arrow can also be written as 225 degrees or negative 135 degrees. Google Earth offers three formats to read out latitude and longitude angles of a point. The numbers shown here express the same latitude angle as decimal degrees, degrees minutes seconds, and degrees and decimal minutes. UTM coordinates are based on the UTM grid system. The grid is established between 84 degrees north and 80 degrees south. The UTM grid system employs a series of 60 longitudinal zones covering the entire world. These zones are numbered 1 to 60 from west to east. Each zone is 6 degrees wide in longitude, with a few exceptions north of 56 degrees latitude. The equator splits each of these 60 UTM zones into a northern and southern hemisphere. UTM coordinates are based on a family of 120 transverse Mercator map projections, one for each zone and hemisphere. In the UTM system, positions are expressed as X and Y coordinates called easting and northing, which are provided in meters. A full description of a point position contains also the zone number and the hemisphere. The left figure depicts part of a UTM Zone 18 projected in the transverse Mercator projection and overlaid with the coordinate grid. The easting has a value of 500,000 meters at the central meridian of each zone. This is independent of whether the area of interest is located in the northern or southern hemisphere. The right figure shows the complete extent of UTM Zone 18 in the northern hemisphere. As can be seen, the northing has a value of 0 meters at the equator for the northern hemisphere. For the southern hemisphere, the northing at the equator is 10 million meters, which is not shown in this figure. The provided combination of numbers and letters on the bottom is an example of a complete point description in UTM Zone 18. It consists of UTM Zone, Hemisphere, where N stands here for Northern Hemisphere, as well as easting and northing coordinates. The approximate location of this point is indicated by the red arrow to the right. More specifically, this point is located in Central Park in New York City. In many UTM applications, the letter after the zone number designates a latitudinal band, not a hemisphere. As this figure shows, the UTM system has 20 latitudinal bands spanning the latitudes 80 degrees south, 
to 84 degrees north, denoted by the letters C to X omitting the letters I and O. Each of these bands extends over 8 degrees in latitude, apart from band X, which extends over 12 degrees. Using this notation, the point in Central Park from the previous slide would be written with the letter T for the latitudinal band instead of a letter N for Northern Hemisphere. The approximate location of this point is highlighted in the UTM zone system map, showing that it falls inside the T latitudinal band. Google Earth uses latitudinal bands in its UTM point descriptions. The Military Grid Reference Systems MGRS, is an alphanumeric system for expressing UTM and universal polar stereographic coordinates. Using the same grid zone designations as the UTM grid system, MGRS consists of the numbered 6 degree longitudinal zones and 8 degree latitudinal bands designated by a letter. This illustration shows part of the corresponding index map. 6 by 8 degree grid zone designators are printed in blue, as highlighted by the black arrows. Additionally, each grid zone designator is covered by a specific scheme of squares, 100,000 meters or 100 kilometers on a side. A two letter pair is used to identify each square. With increasing latitude, outer squares gradually become narrower. This figure shows part of UTM Zone 17R and adjacent zones, overlaid with an array of squares covering 100 km squares. Gainesville is located within the LN grid zone designation as indicated by the arrow. Locations within each 100 km square are specified through coordinate distances measured from the southwest corner of that square. The number of digits used in the grid coordinates depends on the precision that is required. A 10-digit number is the maximum possible, where the first five digits represent the eastern coordinate and the last five digits represent the northern coordinate. This would specify a location within a 1 meter square. The alphanumeric value to the right references the entrance to UF's Ben Hill Griffin Stadium using the different components of the military grid reference system, notation explained before. This presentation introduced the different coordinate systems in which locations in Google Earth can be read out and precisely determined. Background information about the different coordinate systems, including geographic coordinates, UTM coordinates, and the military grid reference system was provided.